This is a 750cc Royal Enfield engine I've been working on, a Series 1 interceptor, and uh, it's had a full rebuild, among other things. It's also got this crankshaft mounted self generating electronic ignition, which also acts as an alternator and gives current to charge a battery and for lights, etc. And uh, it's been a bit of a tricky thing to fit, but I've got it set up quite nicely now. Um, the shimming and uh, spacing and everything took a bit of working out uh, it's not a straight swap for the original setup and another thing i found with it was that the stator on these three studs wasn't concentric to the rotor so i had to file flats i don't know if you can see one on this one on the studs there to allow the slots in the stator to allow the stator to be shifted over that way a little to centralise it. So I've done that and I've had a few attempts at spacing this on the crankshaft and uh, I finally got it where I want it. And here's a couple of things that I had to do. Uh, this here is an original standard bolt that you would put into the end of the crankshaft to hold the alternator rotor on. And it wouldn't quite reach to screw this on. Might have caught by a couple of threads but that was all really, it wasn't enough. So I had to have this one made which has got the same length threads on the end of it but this shank is longer and this shoulder is shorter and also the hexagon end of the bolt is shallower so that when it fits in there, it doesn't project too far and rub on the inside of the casing. So there's been a few sort of put together and take apart and measure and check and adjust sessions going on with this one, but I finally got it. I've also got fitted in there a non-standard crankshaft adapter. This is a, again is a standard part as was also that bolt. Um, I've had another one of these made up which is longer in this section from the flange to there. The original is 22 millimetres, this one is 22 millimetres from there to there. I had to have one made up that was 37 to uh, carry this rotor and you can see that it's still a good way short of coming through to the end but there's enough of it there holding this. This is locked on with a taper lock, there's no key used on this so it just relies on being tight and having the bolt wound up nice and tightly and the taper lock clamps everything together and uh, that's supposed to stop it from skidding on the crankshaft. Um, but of course you need this bolt in there done up nice and tightly as well so I had to make sure that the shoulder was short enough not to bottom out on the end of the crankshaft adapter which is now longer than it was originally and that is why this part on this bolt is shorter than it would have originally been on that one. So if you get this and screw it in, I've got the timing, all the ignition timing, everything is set on this now. I only removed the bolt so that it could be seen on the camera. I'll just tighten that up a moment. That. And now that's all done up nice and tightly and in position and correctly timed, all ready to run. And this casing also fit on there nice and tidy. There we are. Originally there was no way that I could get this any closer than about there. So a few tweaks. So I've got it to go all the way. And there will be a rubber seal around there which will just sort of pad it out a little as well. So finally there. But it's, it's uh, taking a bit of head scratching and uh, as I've already said, offering parts up and checking and measuring and 
taking off and adjusting and we're finally there and this engine's probably ready to go home now I would say just in time for Christmas